If you had the chance to recreate something, would you choose to bring your values into it? Bringing an abandoned cabin back to life, we made a decision to use natural materials and avoid building materials filled with harmful chemicals. An experiment that influenced every decision we made, making this build a very unique experience. In this video, we'll guide you through our use of natural materials, providing a list of pros and cons. We'll also share where we deviated from our natural philosophy and why. Our objective was to be realistic rather than perfect, testing the limits of avoiding manufactured chemicals. In the end, we'll reveal whether the rewards of prioritizing natural materials over cheaper, more convenient alternatives were worth the efforts. Above all, we want to emphasize that this video isn't meant to pass judgment or offer moral guidance. Instead, our goal is to inspire and encourage, showcasing what we have used and how it has worked out. As one of my favorite author, Peter Kelly, writes, everyone is doing their best, guys. So, if you're drawn to the idea of sustainability and natural building, stick around and let us take you on an unforgettable building adventure. The first material we started to build with was wood. We avoided impregnated wood, which is treated to last longer and to be protected from fungal attacks and rot. And we went instead with natural, untreated wood. The cabin is primarily made out of wood, so this was a really big area. Everything from the giant planks under the rafters to the tiny wedges to keep them in place. Through the process, we have joked a lot about how much easier it would have been to use, for example, plastic instead of wood. When we put the rafters in place, they could probably have been stabilized in seconds if we had a bucket of plastic wedges. <laughs> instead, Julian crafted them out of some pieces of the old subroof, so it took some more time, definitely. But using fresh, clean and natural wood feels really good. This is going to be the fundament for our home. And knowing that the air we breathe in this house is free from harmful chemicals is amazing. The next area is the entire roof. We made the roof with wooden boards as subroof and then rolled on roofing felt, which is not entirely a natural material. So this is one of the places where we chose a secure solution over natural materials to protect the roof and make it last for maybe another 100 years. We skipped the vapor barrier, which is a thin layer of soft plastic to protect insulation from being wet, from moisture. Instead, we put our trust into the passageway of air between the subroof and the natural insulation. But I'll get back to the choice of insulation later. Then Julian got the boards in place to hold the roof tiles, also with natural wood. We chose to use the same kind of roof tiles that were on the original house. We wanted to honor the house and its previous owners. And also this was a great material that is made out of clay. The only reason it doesn't melt into the soil when it rains is because it's burnt. So it's completely natural. The downside of using these beautiful clay tiles was that they were each like a unique piece of art with tiny inconsistencies, which made them tricky to place. Again, it could have been so fast and easy just using a different roof material. Whether or not our way of building the roof will cause any trouble, only time will tell. So far, everything seems to work beautifully. And I should also mention that we're not completely done with the roof yet. You can subscribe if you want a heads up when we continue on finishing the roof. And remember also liking the video if you want to make our video reach more people. The roof looks really beautiful and we love that we chose a more time-consuming material. It does the job and with time, these clay tiles would just go back to nature if nobody lived here. The next topic is the insulation and wind barrier. Another comprehensive material was the insulation. If you saw our video about keeping this cabin warm in the winter, you know that we used a lot of insulation. Insulation is normally a material where you need to wear gloves, masks and a suit when working with it because it's so harmful. And we didn't want that in our house where we eat, sleep and breathe. So we went with insulation made from wooden fibers from a Norwegian brand called Hunten. Because we ordered so much of it to keep the whole house warm, there was a lot of plastic waste from the packaging. But again, it's impossible to be perfect. After putting in the insulation on the outside of the house, we put on a black paper wind barrier to protect it. This paper is impregnated and not entirely a natural material. So this is a compromise we made in lack of better ideas. Together with the natural insulation, this will make sure that the house will stay warm, even when it's cold and windy outside. 
Although the insulation was natural, we sometimes still used masks and protective glasses because it was so dusty. When cutting in them, and especially when pushing them up above our heads, it got everywhere in our eyes and noses, and it was really irritating to work with at times. But still, I cannot imagine what it would have been like if I couldn't touch the insulation or breathe the air around it while working. We have spent so many hours working with insulation, and I think I would go crazy if all those many, many hours I had to be really careful around it. Plastic. <laughs> the water pipes and the drain is one area where we used plastic. We simply didn't know how else to do it. So all the water pipes and drain are made of plastic. Also the pipes for the electricity from the solar panels that are laid in the walls all over the house are plastic. Feel free to share in the comments if you have better ideas for someone else who wants to build a natural house. This is the only plastic that is built into the house. The floors are just as all the other wood, made out of untreated wood. It is so beautiful. But some cons here are that it is really sensitive until we have given it some treatment. Julian was laying the floor literally as we were moving in. So we didn't have time to give it oil or anything before we started living here for the summer with our family. So the floors are just waiting to be treated. Actually, we haven't decided yet what we're gonna do with them. Maybe you have some good ideas? The cons with this is that we have to have carpets all over the floor to not leave any ugly marks before we treat it. And when we do, we're not gonna be able to walk on them while they dry, so it has to be very well planned. On the other hand, we get to decide ourselves which beautiful look we want to give them. Maybe with your help on deciding. And again, walking barefoot on natural floorboards that don't have any mystical chemicals in them just feels really, really good. Although we did use a little bit of glue to make the ends stick together. So not completely chemical free, but a lot less than it could have been. The walls are also built with wooden boards. It's very common to use drywall or MDF for even surfaces, but none of those materials are natural choices. So we went with the old fashioned way, which took a little longer. <laughs> Since we didn't use big boards and make the walls with even surfaces, it will be difficult if we want to decorate the rooms with the vintage wallpaper. And it also definitely took longer to put one board up at the time <laughs> than just to put a whole board up. The wooden boards look really cute and honestly it's been really cozy when we have been working on it together. But as you can see we are far from finished. The windows were actually hard to find recycled. We wanted to buy all the windows used but they were really pricey and we found only one. So that one is already painted white as we want it, but the other ones we bought untreated just like the wood. The downside is that we have to treat and paint them ourselves, which can be time consuming and we need to do it fast. Because we didn't take the time to treat them in the summer, there are already dark stains on the wood on the outside that we need to fix up now in the spring. The upside is that we got the gorgeous windows that we wanted for a fair price. We're gonna want to paint the windows white to go with the red house but we're not sure yet which paint we should use. The house, of course, had to be painted dreamy red again. And for this, we of course used Swedish Falu Rødfær, a traditional red paint made in the Falun mine since 1764, more than 250 years ago. And they haven't made any changes to it since then. I don't think there are any cons to this. The paint is great to work with, it smells really nice and it holds very well. And of course, looks amazing if you like little Swedish houses. The terrace is also made from natural wood that needs to be treated with oil. A special little con with this one is that one day Julian sent me to town to buy these planks. I had never been to the builder's merchant by myself, so when I saw the right measurements, I got so excited. When I had climbed up and got all 11 planks secured on top of the van, I was so proud, but only to come back to the cabin and find out that they were all impregnated. <laughs> and when I tried to return them, I learned that you can't return planks in a builder's merchant. So we had to buy new ones, and the terrace is wonderful. It is so lovely to step outside in the morning with a cup of tea. Looking back, we do have some regrets we would like to share with you, so you can learn from our mistakes. The roof tiles could have been secured better with binders to keep them in place. If we could do it all over again, we would have made time to treat the floors right away. And the same goes for the windows that now need to be fixed before we can treat them. 
if you're considering the same insulation solution as us, we now know that it took up a lot of space. So on second thoughts, we could have built some kind of shed to store it in, or even better, have it delivered our multiple times, if you were willing to pay for it. All in all, we are incredibly happy with our choices. Even though many of the natural materials took more time and were a bit tricky to work with, we don't regret for a second that we chose this approach. It has definitely been worth it. This is the end of the adventure for now, which of course continues. We hope that you got something out of it, and whichever materials or values you choose, or see other people choose, just remember, we are all doing our best with what we have. Take care and we will see you in the next video. Bye bye!